Hello, and welcome to another OXC video. Today we will be covering problem 5.36 from Koretsky's Engineering and Chemical Thermodynamics book. One mole of CO is initially contained on one half of a well-insulated rigid tank. Its temperature is 500 Kelvin. The other half of the tank is initially at vacuum. A diaphragm separates the two compartments. Each compartment has a volume of one liter. Suddenly the diaphragm ruptures Use the van der Waals equation for any non-ideal behavior. Answer the following questions. A. What is CV at the initial state? B. Do you expect the temperature to increase, decrease, or remain constant? Justify your answer with molecular arguments. Be specific about the nature of the forces involved. C. What is the temperature of the final state? And D. What is the entropy change of the universe for this process? We can begin by doing a rough sketch of the initial and the final state of this system. Um, we know in the beginning there is a, a wall that separates two chambers and the final state there is no wall. So in the final state we have two liters of one mole of CO with an unknown temperature and this comes from a known um, one liter with one mole of CO at 500 Kelvin in one chamber, and in the other chamber we have one liter of vacuum. So part A requires us to answer the following question. What is CV at the initial state? And we know at the initial state we have one liter of one mole of CO 500 Kelvin. And we know that because uh, this is a non-ideal, because we're using uh, CO, carbon monoxide, we can use the van der Waals equation, which is P equals RT over V minus B minus A over B squared, with A is equal to 27 over 64 of RTC squared divided by PC. with TC and PC being the critical temperature and pressure, and B is equal to RTC over 8PC, so with critical temperature and critical pressure. Uh, we don't need to solve for A and B right now because it's not necessary at this point. Um, we need CV real, and CV real is equal to CV ideal plus the integral from ideal volume to real volume of temperature times the second partial derivative of uh, pressure over temperature with respect to at constant volume integrated dV. And from the van der Waals equation, we can find the first partial derivative with constant volume, which is R over V minus B. And then we can also do the second partial derivative, just differentiate again, and we get zero. And that is important because now we know that the second term in the equation is zero, so now we can just see that the um, CV real is equal to the ideal CV. Next, we can use the equation that R is equal to CP ideal minus CV ideal. Basically, R is equal to the specific heat and constant pressure minus a specific heat and constant volume. And we can rearrange this and factor out the R in that we get the specific um, heat at constant volume for an ideal case is equal to R times specific heat at constant pressure of an ideal case divided by R minus one. And I did this because there is an equation that we can use which has specific heat at constant pressure over R which is equal to A plus BT 
plus ct squared plus dt to the minus 2 plus et cubed. And by solving this equation, we can just plug this straight in for CPI over R. Instead, we would have to, it would be easier for us. And for carbon monoxide, uh, the following terms are now. A is equal to 3.376. B is equal to 0 0.557 times 10 to the minus 3. And D is equal to negative 0 0.031 times 10 to the 5. There are no C terms and E terms. Both of them are equal to 0. By plugging these values in, we get the following equation. CP over R is equal to 3.376 plus 0 0.557 times 10 to the negative 3 times T minus 0 0.031 times 10 to the fifth times t to the minus 2. And we can use this for any value of cp. That is why um, the ideal case has been removed. Then using this equation, you can plug this back into the cp equation. So we get Specific heat at constant volume is equal to gas constant R times 3.376 plus 0 0.557 times 10 to the negative 3 times T minus 0 0.031 times 10 to the 5th times T to the minus 2 minus 1. And let's finish it up brackets more apparent. Then by solving this, we get a value of that the specific heat constant volume is roughly equal to 22 joules per mole Kelvin. Now for part B, it asks us if the temperature should increase, decrease, or stay constant. So we'll T increase, decrease, and stay constant. And we need to define, we need to explain it using a molecular no. So we know that there's the same number of moles in the beginning at the end. So n is constant because we have one mole of carbon monoxide in the beginning and carbon monoxide in the end. But the volume increases because we have one liter that goes to two liter, and therefore particles are further away from each other because we still have the same number of moles. And the, when the molecules are further away, their potential energy increases. And as energy is conserved, if potential in energy increases, kinetic energy must decrease. And if the kinetic energy decreases, then the, the molecules are not moving and therefore temperature is decreasing. 